Hello everyone and welcome to today's tutorial on Blender Shader Nodes. Today, I'll be teaching you how to make this neon puddle effect using a few simple shader nodes and a few simple geometry nodes. It'll be a simple tutorial this time around, so without further ado, let's get started. First of all, what we want to do is make our mesh for our puddle. So let's start with a circle and bring this into the center of the scene. There we are. And what we're going to do is take our circle and extrude it using the E key. Make sure you're in vertex mode when you do that or else it won't work properly. And then we're going to scale this down to almost zero, something just about like that. You want it to be fairly small. And then what we're going to do is extrude and send it straight up, just like that. That seems pretty good. And then what we are going to do next is select one of these faces. Let's go into the UV editing section, just like that. We're going to select one of these and press U, reset, and this will reset this UV map to be perfectly square. Then you're, we are going to uh, press A to select everything and then press U again, and then press follow active quads. And what this will do is unwrap the entire mesh based off of the already unwrapped uh, quad that we have here. So if we do that, we can see that we have this very nice grid effect. And if we add in a new material, let's do that real quick. And then look at the UV map. We can see that the UV map is now laid out in the way it's supposed to. So if we use a converter separate XYZ node, we could see that if we take the Y gradient, there is a gradient from the edge to the center and all the way up. So now let's start making the actual puddle drip effect. So to do that, we need to use a math node and a fraction node, just like this. And as we can see, let's hide it so that we could see the effect a bit better. When using the add node, if we just add to this, it causes kind of a puddle effect. So let's animate that by using hashtag frame divided by 24. Let's see, is that working? Oh, hashtag frame. Let's see, frame divided by 24. Here we go, that should be spelled correctly. Here we go. And now that we have this, we can see that it is now animated properly, which is very good. But we could do a bit more to make this look a little bit better. So as we could see with the top portion right here, the drops are falling a little too slowly. And actually, let's, let's make the drops look more drop-like. So let's move this over a tad. And now we're going to use a color ramp. And we're going to add in another node just so that it gets brighter than darker, or darker than brighter than darker again, just like that. There we go. But we could see that if falling takes too much time. So to manipulate that, we're going to take the top vertices right here in the UV map. And if we press on this little arrow key right here, it'll sync the selection with the UV map. So if we do that, we could just move this down. And as we could see, if I play this, it looks like the drop is taking much less time to hit the ground just by moving the UV map. And if we do this, it makes it slower. This one, it makes it faster. I think something like that is okay. We might have to speed up the entire animation, which I'll do right now. Let's speed it up to uh, 20. Should be okay. Yeah, that seems pretty good. So now what we are going to do is neon this thing. So to do that, what we're going to do is add in two, uh, a few nodes, the emissions shader, the transparent shader, and a mix shader right here. We're going to feed our transparent or our color ramp right here into the mix shader. So if I move this over to here, I'll move this so that we could see more of the nodes in a bigger viewing area. So let's move that right there. And if we look at this, we can see that it's not working. That's because we need to switch to the alpha blend mode if you are using Eevee. If you are using cycles, this will work just fine. So let's switch that to alpha blend and the shadow mode to none. As we can see, this is now working, but we can make it look a little bit better using my fancy glowy fall off effect. You'll see what I mean in a second. I've used this in previous tutorials, but it is incredibly useful whenever you are using uh, emission effects. So what we're going to do is add in a math node, hook this into the bottom selection, and we're going to have one node set to minimum, and then another one set to logarithm. Let's do that. 
And we're going to set both of these top values to 0.999. Let's copy that over to here as well. As we can see, oh, one thing that we need to do is flip around the mix shader so that the emission is on the bottom. There we go. And now if we crank up the emission shader, it's looking a bit more glowy and just a bit better overall. There we go. So if we were to do this without the fancy fall off effect, it would look like that, not the best, but with this, it looks pretty good. And if you want an even better um, fall off, then we just add a multiply node after that, hook the multiply into there, hook that into the color ramp. So it'll look just like this. You could add in a frame just so that you could carry it around easier. But this is how I do most of my glowy effects, and it just makes it look that much better. So there we go. Let's increase the brightness a bit. One more thing that we could do is make it so that this fades off at the edges instead of just abruptly ending where the mesh ends. So to fix that, let's just go and use our UV map again. There we go. Let's look at this color ramp. Let's make it so that it fades off at the edge. There we go. That seems pretty good. And then we'll just multiply the our gradient right here by that, and it should work pretty much perfectly. There we go. Oh yeah, that the dispersion. It looks like uh yeah, the dispersion is working quite well. And now that we have the node set up pretty much done, we could start making tons of puddles. So to do that, let's go and move our puddle to the side over here. This will be our base object. Then we're going to add in a plane and do a little bit of geometry notes. But don't worry, it's not too much. So let's add in a new geometry node editor, set a new geometry node. And what we're going to do is use the instance on points node, put that right there. And we're going to drag and drop our circle mesh into here and do that but we're only getting four, uh, one on each vertice of this plane. We don't want that. We want many points on the surface. So to do that, we're going to use the instance on, or the distribute points on faces node. There we go, right here. And as we can see, if we lower the density, we are getting lots more points. And let's just make this a little bit bigger, something more like that. And we can control how many of these show up just by changing the density. And you could change the seed if you want a different layout. But as we can see, here's a little problem. All of these are perfectly synchronized, which we do not want. Well, let me go and just increase the amount here just a little bit more. And we, we don't want these to be synchronized. We want each one to fall at a different time. So to change that, let's go back into the shader editor of our original one. And we want to add a random value for our time right here. So to do that, let's use the input object info. And this will give us a random value per instance. As we can see here, each of these has a random value with this random input. And let's add that to the part right here. And as we can see, if I go back and play this, we're getting a random value for each one. But we need to make it a little more by just using a multiply node and cranking it up to something like, I don't know, 20 should be good enough. But now we're getting random puddles for every instance. And again, if we go into geometry nodes once again, and then go and crank up the amount. Let's see, where is it? Ah, there it is. Let's just crank it up a bit more. And boom, we got tons of puddles going. And yeah, that's basically the entire effect. We could change a few more things, like uh, let's go into the shader editor again. We can use the random node to also affect the color per instance. So let's go over to here, put this one to blue, and the other one to more of a pinkish. And there you go, you have a very nice, this could almost be a firework effect if you want. But yeah, it's quite nice. And make sure you add some frames to your node setups just to make them look a bit cleaner. There we go. Always organize your nodes. And yeah, that should be the entire effect. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like and subscribe. Check out my Gumroad account. There's plenty of free and paid stuff on there. Check out my Twitter account, my Instagram account, my ArtStation account, all that good stuff. And yeah, I will see you in the next tutorial.